Hey guys, welcome back to our Bible study. Um, today we're going to study about Job. So, you know, we're going to continue studying about prayer in the Bible. And today, specifically, we're going to learn by studying Job. Let's say the books of the Bible until we get to Job. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job. So, you know, sometimes we just have bad days, don't we? I mean, things just seem like they're not going to go right. But when I think about bad days, I think about Job. Job started, in the book of Job starts off, Job had it all. He had a big family with 10 kids. He had thousands of animals. He was rich and he was well respected by the people all around him. But the most important thing about Job was that he obeyed God. Job chapter 1, verse 1, said that Job was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Job was so impressive that God talked to him, talked about him to Satan. Verse 8, God said, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. Satan said that the only reason that Job obeyed God was because everything was good for Job. He said, if things went wrong, Job would curse God. So the Lord allowed Satan to do what he wanted. But he wasn't allowed to physically harm Job. So one day, Job got four messages in a row, back to back to back to back. At almost the exact same time, Job found out that all of his animals, all of his servants, and all of his servants, and all of his children had died. All in one day, in just a matter of a few minutes. But even with all of that, Job still worshipped God. Verse 22 of chapter 1 said, In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with, wrongdo with wrongdoing. Then, again, God told Satan about Job. And Satan said that if he could physically harm Job, that Job would curse God. So Satan was allowed to test Job, but he could not kill him. Job got these painful sores all over his body, so much so that he used broken pottery to scrape them. It was so bad that Job's wife told him just to curse God and die. But Job didn't. And the Bible says that Job did not sin in what he said. Now Job had three friends who came to be with him while Job was mourning and sad. For seven days and seven nights, none of them said anything. They just sat with him to comfort him. But then Job finally began to speak, began to speak and he cursed the day that he was born. But he didn't curse God. Job's friends began to speak and they said that Job must have sinned to cause this punishment from God. Job knew he hadn't sinned, and he kept telling them this. He wanted to know why this was happening. He wanted to know from God why this was happening. He just he wanted to talk to God about it. Job chapter 31, verse 35 said, Oh, that I had someone to hear me. I sign now my defense. Let the Almighty answer me. Let my answers put my indict let my accuser put my indictment in writing. Well, Job almost got what he wanted. Um, you see, he got to talk to God, but um, it didn't exactly go so well. It didn't go the way that Job was expecting it to go. You see, God started to question Job. Uh, chapter 38, verses 1 through 3 said, Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plan? Without, with words without knowledge. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. So God started asking Job questions like, where were you at creation? How big was the earth? Who measured it? What was the cornerstone of the earth? He asked Job, have you ever been in control of the morning or the dawn? Do you ever given instructions? Have you seen the bottom of the ocean? Job, God went on asking Job questions that Job had no chance of answering, of, of knowing the answers to, of even understanding some of the questions. 
there's things in the questioning from God that we didn't understand as humans until oh, until very recently. Even Job had no chance of knowing. Job tried to answer God in uh, chapter 40, verses 4 and 5, saying that he was unworthy and that he wouldn't be asking God anything more. But God wasn't done. In chapter 40, verse 7, God said, God again said, brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. God wasn't through. God had more. So God started asking Job things about, about the creatures like the behemoth and the leviathan. And all about, and just I continued asking Job all these things. In Job 42, chapter 42, Job finally got to respond, finally got to respond to the Lord. And he said, I know you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures plan, my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Job understood that he didn't understand before. And he repented to God. God then continued, told Job's friends that they were wrong for saying that Job had sinned. But God accepted Job's prayer for them. Then God gave Job twice as many riches and animals as he had had before. And Job had ten more children. We end up, Job wound up living to be 140 years old. So what all can we learn from Job? Well, we can learn a couple things. One, we need to praise God even when, when things are good and when things are bad. We need to praise God. And we need to pray those praises to God, and we do that in prayer. Two, God knows everything. We can't come close to understanding the things that God does, that God knows. Job thought he understood that he was right, and thought that he had a basis to question God. And God went through a whole, through three chapters of things that saying, you don't understand. You don't know. You don't have enough information to ask questions. The third thing is that God has all power. Even Satan had to get permission from God to test Job. And even when he got that permission, God set limits on him. God has all power. So when we pray to God for things, we can know that he has the power to help us. The last thing is that we need to trust God. That even when it feels like things are going wrong, God's going to take care of us in the end. Remember, God's building heaven for us. So that even when things go awful here on earth, we'll have heaven in the end. So here's your challenge this week. I want you to draw a picture of what you think the most impressive thing that God created was. I want you to show it to your parents and tell them why you think it's so impressive. Whether that's an animal, whether it's a mountain, whether it's the clouds, whatever it is that you think is the most impressive thing God created. I want you to draw a picture, show it to your parents, and tell them why. I'd love to see your pictures too, so if you want to show them to me in church or send them to us, uh, have a, take a picture of them and, send, and have your parents send them to us, we'd love to see them. All right, so let's sing a few songs, and then we're going to have a prayer. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. 
My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. All right, let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us. <clears throat> thank you for the way that we can study together and learn together. And thank you for the examples in the Bible, the examples like Job that teach us that, you know, that we can trust you, that you know what's going on uh, on the in or all around us, dear God, and that you have all power. Dear God, help us to do the right things, to obey our parents and our teachers and all those that we're supposed to. Help us to have the respect that we need to, dear God. And, Help us to always love you, to trust you, and, and to always be striving to learn more about you. Thank you again for everything you've given us. Thank you for our friends and our family and keeping us safe. Be with those who are sick, those who are sad and hurting, and help us to comfort them and to, and to do the right things, things you'd always want us to. Thank you again for all you've done for us. Jesus, let me pray.